My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. Other people want to make friends? I'm just trying to help you make some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate and put in context. So call me at 1-800-743-CNBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Will our botched vaccine rollout end up shutting down the economy? Will the crazy action and short squeezes like GameStop cause the stock market to collapse under its own weight? Does it even make sense to fret about this stuff with a slew of major earnings reports on the way starting tomorrow? After a day where the market was torn in two different directions, Dow declining 37 points, S&P advancing 0.36%, and then Nasdaq gaining 0.69%, we need to talk about what I think of as the vaccination GameStop dichotomy. This weekend, we were treated to story after story about how President Biden's pledge to jab 100 million people in 100 days could be impossible to carry out. Even if we work out the logistics problems, there may not be enough vaccines to go around. Meanwhile, we keep hearing about these new COVID strains that could potentially beat the vaccine, making the whole exercise pointless. We already know the economy is weakening. While new infections have begun to pull back from their highs, although we're still seeing many days with well over 200,000 cases, the psychological impact is causing people to stay home, resulting in kind of a voluntary shutdown. But it's not like the economy's in ruins. For the 93% of the workforce that's still gainfully employed, they've got nothing to spend their paychecks on. So they either invest or pay down debt. The service economy may be in horrible shape, but unless you work in travel, leisure, dining, or sports, especially if your company is private and small, you may be doing just fine. Meanwhile, ultra-low interest rates make it easy to buy a new house or a car, something Americans are doing in droves as they leave the cities for the suburbs or even the country. I talk to the home builders, and they say this may be the best housing market they've ever seen because people are desperate for homes with workspace and school space where they can be safe from COVID. You can't put a price on safety, people. And that's why home builders are selling lots so quickly. That's why they keep blowing numbers away. The wholesale exodus from cities has fueled a gigantic number of upside surprises. The new hybrid remote work style has been an enormous boon to the service industry and to retail. Oh, and if you're worried about going out, there's always the stay-at-home enablers. Here's some uh, logical ones. Amazon, Netflix, Take-Two, Domino's. There's other ones just like it. Sure, you have to be worried about the slowness of the vaccine rollout and the undisciplined way people wear masks, the lack of testing infrastructure, but I don't think we're headed for another lockdown. Frankly, the state simply can't afford it. And that's why the governor of California just lifted a stay-at-home order, even though the outbreak's still pretty bad out there. We know how to do this, though. You can leave most of the economy open as long as you keep the elderly and the at-risk at home. So if you're selling stock here because you believe the economy's cracking, I think you're making a mistake. The Federal Reserve is keeping interest rates low. We hear from Chairman Powell on Wednesday, and I have no doubt he'll stick to his guns when it comes to easy money. Meanwhile, most consumers have lots of spending money that they'll be able and and eager to use once we're vaccinated and the world goes back to normal, please. But how about the second worry, that the stock market will be brought down by the wild actions in stocks like GameStop. That's that retailer place game. You go in and you buy video games and, you know, you buy the hardware. Uh, it, this GameStop is really something we must talk about because it's been bid up uh, higher and higher by enthusiastic traders. Now, there's a forum I've mentioned before, Wall Street Bets. It's on Reddit. Now, a lot of younger people read Reddit. I read Reddit because younger people read it. That's why. Now, they've got a community of very rabid investors who will choose individual stocks and then run them up as a group with commentary about how much they love them. Now, they don't target just any stocks. They go after the ones that are heavily shorted in order to come up with a short squeeze. They'll come up with a thesis all in display and then run them and run them until the shorts have to cover their positions, spurring still one more leg higher. Now, I know what it's like to get caught on the wrong side of a short squeeze. The only thing a short seller can really do when targeted is to throw in the towel. No point in trying to fight it. You just have to cover your short, meaning buy back the stock to close that position before, before you run out of money. You can see this battle, how it played out in GameStop today. Look at this, okay? And that was just today. See that spike? Yes. The shorts believe the company's worthless, but the longs think it's going to the moon. Long term, I think the bear case is right. GameStop is a brick-and-mortar video game retailer at a time when people increasingly download their games off the Internet. But I don't believe that short term. Short term, they have the new Xbox. They have new PlayStation. They just came out with those things. They're flying off the shelves. They've got a new big investor who's very smart. Uh, It's easy for the longs to come in and gun GameStop higher and make good money. 
If it, it, it hasn't been made already, though, when the stock spiked to 159 today before closing at 76. The Wall Street bets crowd can easily find stocks with big short positions. They're, you can look them up. It's not a problem. GameStop was uh, ludicrously shorted. More than 148% of the stock had been sold short, which is nuts. For years, betting against this thing has been like shooting fish in a barrel. But they forgot what can happen when the longs gang up on you. And gang up is a technical term. I'm not saying they're working in concert. I'm not saying they're doing anything illegal. I am saying that they are in force. We saw the same thing today in B&G Foods. You know, we've had them on Bed Bath. We've had them on, too. They've got short positions of 36% and 63%, respectively. They're going after Rocket Mortgage with a 31% short. It's crazy out there. Bed Bath Beyond Stock, which opened up four at 34, then leaped to 47, squeezed up by the cheerleading smaller investors. And then it plummeted to $30.68 to finish up just 47 cents. The squeeze didn't stick. My advice to the shorts, I'm not going to make, give any advice to the Wall Street Reddit crowd. They're making a lot of money. But my advice to the shorts, stop crowding to the same trades, leaving yourself open to this kind of action. You'll never know who Wall Street bets will target next. Now, not all of the, these targeted buying campaigns are about uh, busting the shorts. Some of the stocks they aim for are genuinely loved and they think are very undervalued. Here I'm thinking BlackBerry. It's got a good software business. Palantir, both of which had gargantuan runs today. They are so loved, and the Wall Street Bets crowd doesn't seem to want to stop buying at these levels. They always look at, use these targets like the analysts who are too enthusiastic. But as entertaining as these moves are, this stuff is ultimately a sideshow. At the end of the day, I don't think a Reddit form can bring the house down. They're picking undervalued stocks, bet a big short position, and run with them. And that can cause crazy moves in a handful of stocks, but it's not big enough to move the entire market. Come on. What really matters now is that we have a stock pickers market for the first time in 20-odd years. This is a market that rewards individual companies for being well-run, and that means stocks are less sensitive to the broader economy than they used to be. Now, we know many of the biggest winners thrive in a shutdown because they enable the stay-at-home economy. Remember that? Stay-at-home economy, we've got, we've got just indices galore to show this stuff. I think most of tech has gotten overheated at these levels. The endless price target boost for the semiconductor and Apple are very unnerving to me. They set a high bar. That can hurt the market. There's a whole gauntlet of stocks that are from, roared from Microsoft to Tesla to Boeing to AMD, and they could really hurt us if they get hit with a big bout of profit taking all at once. But of these, only Apple's at its highs right now. Meanwhile, when a company reports a decent quarter, as Kimberly Clark did today, the stock soars. Hey, do you know that Clorox followed up in sympathy at one point? It's up 22 points. Of course, stocks go down just as much when they disappoint, and that's what happened to IBM last week. It's a market of stocks, people. So the bottom line, with the exception of a handful of gigantic tech plays, there isn't a stock out there that's big enough to bring down this market. If anything, the gauntlet of earnings this week started with J&J tomorrow which is not at all sense of the economy, could be a terrific sign that many big cap stocks are immune to a slowdown and unperturbed by the crazy action in marginal names like a GameStop or B&G Food or even a rocket mortgage in Bed Bath & Beyond. It's a market of stocks, people, not a stock market anymore. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com. Or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.